Almost every day I get on YouTube, I see these extravagant desk tour videos with tons of LED lights, accessories, and gadgets, and think, dang, that's dope. But this would never work for me, mainly because of the space. In 2021, I had a massive home office with all the space I could ask for. A walk-in gear closet, full bathroom, media setup for casual gaming, and a huge desk with a lot of space and accessories. But then I purchased my first home and had to drastically downsize to a nine by nine room in the corner of my house, which means I had to get a much smaller desk. No more just throwing anything on my desk. I had to think about only the necessary. And this is what I came up with. Let's start with the desk itself. I decided to go with the Jarvis wood veneer standing desk by Fully. The custom setup I went with is a natural oak finish, 48 by 27 inch top, white legs, and white chromic covers to match those. Now I'll be honest, there are a ton of companies out here making great quality standing desks, but I went with Fully because of the YouTube hype at the time. I love the desk and the quality of it, but just figured I'd be honest. My previous desk setup was very dark, all monochromatic, grays and blacks. I got this configuration because I wanted something totally different. I needed to spark a color and I just love the light wood tones. The Jarvis is an electric standing desk, which for me is mandatory. I'm here often polishing edits, sending emails, scripting video concepts. I have to be able to stand every now and then to just stretch my body. The desk comes with a small controller panel that you can program four custom heights to, so it's easy for me to go from sitting to standing with just the press of a button. I love the desk. It's sturdy, it's nice. The built-in grommet holes make it easy for clean wire management. It doesn't rock when typing or doing anything. It's a solid desk. This is the Capisco chair, and it's another Fully product. And I gotta be completely honest, this was a hype purchase as well. The hype must be working though, because when I purchased this chair, it was $879, and now it's $1,138. What the f Hype aside though, this chair is actually fire. It's one of those things you don't really understand until you try it. I thought I would hate this because I would always buy the desk chairs that had the most head support and the arms for relaxing, but it surprised me. I think the reason why everyone loves this chair is because it has the same philosophy as a standing desk. Move your body every now and then so it doesn't hurt. You can use this chair in so many different ways and it's just as effective when working at a desk. Upright, sideways, relax with the elbows on the back, backwards, standing up. I think what really adds to the versatility of this chair are the micro adjustments you can make. You can move the back up or down if you want more lower or upper back support. You can also move the lower cushion back or forward to adjust how much of an upright posture you want, or if you just want to slouch. It's expensive as hell, but it's a really nice desk chair to say the least. Let's get to the hardware, the brains of the desk. Whether you're an Apple user or a PC user, computers are just great right now. For my video editing, I'm using the M1 Ultra Mac Studio, probably overkill and almost fully spec'd out. But if you're gonna be buying a system, I say get more than what you need. That way you can stretch its lifespan out as different forms of media become harder to process. This system couldn't have come out at a better time. It's very powerful, it chops anything I throw at it, it looks really sleek and it's small, which is what I really needed on this smaller desk. I love the fact that the studio has two front-facing Thunderbolt ports for connecting USB-C drives quickly and an SD card slot on the front for quickly transferring video files. It also has a ton of different ports on the back for additional accessories. Paired with the Mac Studio, I have the Studio Display by Apple. The configuration I have is the Nano Glass with the tilt and height adjustable stand. And while I do love this display, I went to Best Buy after I got it and saw the standard glass version and man, it looks so much better to me. The colors are so much more rich and the blacks are so black. The nano glass version does do an excellent job at stopping glare, but if you don't have a huge window or funnier display, I say just get the non texture version if you're interested. Here are a couple things that I love about this display though. Its overall size makes it a great option for video editors. Being able to see a huge timeline, have scopes up and still good size video preview it's pretty dope. The built-in webcam is something I didn't think I'd appreciate as much as I do, but it makes having calls with clients and sponsors so much easier. While the stand does cost more, I feel it's almost a must. It makes the experience of using the display so much better with your posture. Being able to adjust it however you need quickly is just great. The studio display also has a ton of ports on the back as well. It's like an additional hub that works seamlessly with the Mac Studio and I love that. Okay, let's get into the accessories. The mouse I'm using is the MX Master 3S for Mac by Logitech. This is probably the best mouse for editing. The scroll wheels make the process of editing so much faster. On the top, you have the Mac Speed scroll wheel. You can scroll line by line, which is what we're all pretty much used to. But if you press this button, you can scroll 1000 lines per second and stop instantly, which makes browsing and sifting through files so much faster. The thumb wheel makes the process of scrolling horizontal on the timeline so much better. You don't have to click and drag the playhead, you can just scroll to where you want to with your thumb. 
The customization of this mouse is another huge reason why I love it. You can customize app-specific actions for these two buttons in programs like Final Cut Pro 10, Premiere Pro, Photoshop, and more. When editing, I use these buttons to cut and delete clips, which makes chopping down and edit so much faster. On top of that, the mouse compares seamlessly to three different devices and switch between them with the press of a button. It has custom gestures and it can actually charge while using it. Definitely, for me, the best mouse I've ever used. The keyboard I've been experimenting with is the MX Mechanical Mini for Mac. This is my first mechanical keyboard and I'm actually liking it. This keyboard has these dual color keycaps that not only look really sleek, but are made to recognize the typing area through your peripheral view. The keys are nice and tactile. They give that satisfying sound you'd expect when striking a key, but it isn't too loud. Aesthetically, the thing that I love about this keyboard are the backlighting effects. It makes this thing just look fire. You have effects like reaction, which reacts to whatever key you strike, waves, random, breathing, contrast, and static, which is just a standard backlight. The backlighting is also smart as well, so it adapts to whatever ambient lighting environment you're in to help save battery. I mean, size, aesthetic, functionality, you can't go wrong with this keyboard. If you're interested in either one of these, I'll make sure to leave a link down in the description for you guys to check them out. Beneath the keyboard and mouse, I'm using a budget desk mat I got from Amazon. It has a nice leather texture, great price, and quality is surprising, honestly. While I do like a bare desk, constant movement of a mouse can wear down the surface and I really don't want that. This charger station I'm using is also a budget option from Amazon. It's not the prettiest thing in the world or charged the fastest, but it keeps things tidy. It has a section for my iPhone, Apple Watch, and AirPods to keep them in one central area with only one wire, which I like. This cool looking dial here controls the BenQ screen bar halo I have on the Mac Studio. I'm a huge fan of the minimal ambience desk lamps add, but of course my desk is way too small for one, so I got this. There are a few versions of this gadget, but the reason I got this specific one is it also has a light on the back, which can light up behind the display and reduce eye strain. The dial is completely wireless. It turns on the screen bar and you can adjust a few different settings like the light intensity, color temperature, which lights are in use, and has an auto ambience feature as well. You can adjust the angle of the light to keep it from hitting your eyes while in use, or even shine it on you to light yourself for a video call. I have a fake plan from Ikea to add a pop of color and keep some sort of candle on the desk to set a vibe. I'm very into aromatic experiences, so I feel like a candle is just necessary. I recently installed this small storage system from Amazon to house the things that I frequently use. It was very easy to mount with the included adhesive tape, and I highly recommend it if you don't want to clutter up your desk. Inside of this storage, I have my Bose 700 noise canceling headphones. Now, I love these headphones. I use them for editing and traveling. Amazing sound, adjustable noise canceling, and you can use these wired if you want to avoid that slight Bluetooth delay that's just so annoying when editing. I keep a few SSDs in here for storage. I also keep my Loop Deck CT in here. I use that every time I'm editing, but the wires clutter the desk, so I take it off when I'm not. For wire management, I have one power strip mounted to the bottom of my desk using command strips. I plug everything that requires power into this, and this keeps just one plug going from my desk into the wall. I mounted a simple raceway from Amazon under the desk to hold all the wires and just stuff everything in there so they aren't hanging. So that's it. That's my minimal desk setup. Once my office is complete, I'll make sure to do a full office tour. Links to everything that I talked about in this video are down in the description. Drop this video a like. I'm out, y'all. Peace.